Representative Sims, can you hear I me? sure can, guys. You look like you're having a great time. We Hi. are. We are having a great time. Um, it's a little loud. So, Representative Sims, you have a pretty impressive list of accomplishments. I have them on my card, so I'm going to read them and embarrass you a little bit, okay? Go so to it. A policy attorney, a civil rights advocate, the first out LGBT member of the Pennsylvania General Assembly, and a college football champion. That deserves a woo. Woo! Woo, Mr. Sims, thank you so much for joining us. Happy Thank Friday. you guys for having me. Really, thank you for having me. I've been at New York Pride a couple of times, and I know how crazy it can get. Well, you know, that's an easy one. I, I think that one of the things that we, we haven't seen a, enough of in the LGBT community, and we're just starting to see, it, is the difference between being a mentor and being a sponsor. It, it's one thing to, to identify LGBT leadership. It's one thing to help train them. It's a whole other thing to sort of help get them engaged, to bring them into our offices, to bring them into our workplaces, to get them involved in our organizations. Um, we are going to train the next, the next group of LGBT leadership, and, and I think we're starting to do a better job of that. Right, so what barriers do you think members of the LGBT community still face when entering politics? You know, I, listen, I, I was involved for years with the, the National Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund, which has really studied what electing out people can do um, for, for any sort of um, electoral body. And, and we know that electing out people really has a, a, very, a, a very tangible impact on civil rights. And I, I think a lot of out people are afraid that if they run, it's going to be about their sexuality or that their, their sexuality shouldn't matter. And I can tell you in my case, I think that it did matter. Um, Pennsylvania needed to elect somebody that was out and proud because, frankly, our, our laws didn't reflect the wonderful LGBT population that we had. So I think when people are deciding to run, it's you know, going to be a scary thing to sort of put your life on the line. Hopefully in 20, 30, 40 years, a person's sexuality won't matter any more than you know, their family or their nationality. But right now it does matter, and I think that can scare a lot of people away from running. Um, but I hope that it doesn't. Great. And have you noticed any changes in welcoming of LGBT members into elected office? Oh, absolutely. You know, we, we knew in the in the 2000 census, we knew 14 years ago that LGBT people were in 99.8% of counties in the United States. Everybody in America knows somebody that's LGBT. And I think, you know, for me, joining, a legislate, joining the legislature here, I wasn't the first out person that any of my colleagues had ever, had ever known. Maybe that they'd ever worked with in that capacity, but there are out people everywhere in, in all jobs and in all facets uh, um, in, in the country. Absolutely. Cool. And do you have any advice for aspiring LGBT politicos? Darn right. Nonprofit and public interest organizations. There are there are 31 equality organizations, statewide equality organizations. There are LGBT centers, LGBT advocacy groups all over the country that really need people to get to get involved, to get engaged. You know, yeah, we've seen a lot of movement with, with respect to marriage, for example, across the country. But there are states just like mine that still back even the most lack the most basic civil rights. The best way to get involved is find those local nonprofits in your town and your in your city and your municipality and get engaged. It's, it's not just about showing up and protesting, which it is. It's also about making sure that you're letting your local elected officials know how they can help you, making sure that you're letting your town and your community know that you have a presence. And how do you see LGBT issues kind of evolving in the in politics? What can we, we look forward to? Um, I, I think we can look forward to a lot more of what of what Hillary Clinton identified um, several, two years or I think two years ago when she said that that LGBT rights are human rights. The rest of the world looks at LGBT civil rights as human rights, and we're just beginning to see that here in the United States. You know, the the advancement we've made in in LGBT civil rights over the last decade or so has has been in large part because finally we have um, our allies contributing at full force for us and. And I think that's in recognition of the fact that, that our civil rights are indeed human rights. Great. And how are you celebrating Pride today? It looks like you're on a white wall. <laughs> you know what? I'm having the worst Pride celebration of anybody I know. And I, I'm actually going to be in my capital um, voting on a budget. We're required to have a budget passed by the end of the month. And I'm going to be on the House floor in a couple of hours, um, maybe arguing through the night about how we can sort of best fund Pennsylvania. And, uh, Brian, one last question. Any advice for the uh, gentlemen out there that are trying to maintain a nice beard? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. The, the hard questions. I appreciate that. This is my first professional beard, and the advice I got from everybody was 
keep your ne neckline trimmed and use conditioner on it. And so far, so good. Awesome. That's solid babe. advice. Yeah. That's good advice. You try that. Do you have a message for everyone here at NYC today? I, you know, I just want to make sure that, that everybody remembers that, you know, what pride really is. And it's it's not just a celebration. It's about solidarity. Uh, yesterday was the 45th anniversary uh, of Stonewall. And if we've learned anything in the last 45 years, it's that when we are out, when we are loud, and when we are indeed proud, we're at our best and we're treated our best. And so, you know, take full advantage of this time. But I... I hope it inspires people for a year of pride. Great, go on, do something fun today. Yeah, go have fun. Go do I'm something. I'm gonna try. <laughs> and please tell everyone in Pennsylvania, every single person, everyone, happy pride from New York. I, I can do that, and I'm happy to, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, of Thank course. You. Thank you. Thank you.